Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name is Lillian Habana, and I would like to share my testimony of how God transformed my life from an old to a new creation. I was born into a family of seven children with parents who have divided faith. Mama was a God-fearing Christian, but my papa was an avid Roman Catholic whose family had a big influence in his religious life. He once was told by his family, you were born as a Catholic, you will die as a Catholic. But being a Baptist in the morning or Catholic in the afternoon did not wash away my sins. I continued to go to Sunday school with siblings and friends. Growing up, I formed friendships with both believers and unbelievers. On free days, we would gather in a shanty house where we made roofing by weaving dried palm leaves, located by the bridge at Santa Rosario. We do not only learn how to weave palm leaves, we of course learn something else. When five kids put their minds together and the idea seemed enjoyable, then of course, everybody says, Let's do it. We started to gamble. It's at this time that I learned to smoke, not in public, but in the toilet so nobody could see me. I was curious to see how people enjoyed the act of smoking. So I tried. It choked me. So I stopped. In all this, did my mama discipline me? Yes, of course. She would catch me playing cards and would either pull my ears like this. Oh, man, it hurts. Through all of that, Mama would beg and cry and would bring me back to the truth of the Bible. Proverbs 3.3 3 says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Just say yes and promise not to do it again. Game over. There's a saying that curiosity kills a cat. Not the kind of curiosity I had. I have three stories to tell you. First, on the island during religious holidays, parishioners would bring out the saints adorned with glittering clothes carried around for procession. One time, I was playing near the church of the Aglipayans and happened to go under, under the house of one of the church members. And I was stooping to go down under the house. I bumped on something and suddenly I raised my head. I was horrified to see a man, big eyes bulging, with crown of thorns on the head, no clothes. I did not expect to see it naked, no movement. Then I realize it's made of wood. How could people worship a wooden god? Still can't dismiss the idea. These wooden graven images of Christ are adorned during festivities only. I remember Mama telling me when we watched the procession, Bing Bing, that's how she calls me. Remember, do not worship that graven image because they can't hear you. They can see you and they can smell you. They are not breathing. They are not alive. They are not the living God like Jesus. The Bible says, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, the God, am a jealous God. So the second incident was the saint named after Mary Magdalene. She was holding a bottle of perfume. I heard in the Bible story that the perfume Mary used to wash the feet of Jesus smelled so good and was very, very expensive. After the saints' procession, they would be parked outside the lawn of the Aglipayan church and the festivities would continue. My friend and I decided that we would climb the platform of Mary Magdalene and smell the bottle of perfume. To our dismay, it was just a green colored water. Duh, it's fake. 
So the third incident during Easter celebration, there was a reenactment of how Jesus was hanged on the cross. The so-called impersonator of Jesus, we called it back home as a thing, is captured on a Thursday afternoon and hanged on the cross Friday afternoon. After Jesus said his last words, Father, into thy hand I command my spirit, the curtain is closed. You don't see Jesus anymore. Well, I wanted to see Jesus. I want to know what is happening behind that curtain. I slipped towards the back of the church, and to my amazement, Jesus was not hanging on the cross. Where is the a thing? How did he go down? While contemplating what happened, something caught in the corner of my eye. The altar was two to three feet high, and in the middle of the altar is a small closet. Mm. What is hidden in that closet? Curious and nosy as I am, I climbed the altar, open the closet, and find a white, round, thin paper. It's ostias, the bread they use for communion. We call it pangalawat back home. I didn't take communion both in the Christian and the non-Christian church. I was young and wanted to taste it, so I did. It melted in my mouth. There was no flavor. I spew it out of my mouth. There's nothing mysterious to it. So let's go back to that little shanty house. On the same location, the first Baptist church in Santo Rosario stood. Isn't that an irony? Seven faithful believers ran to the place and the church was born. Most of us went to Christian school during high school. So the seed was already sown in our hearts. I accepted Christ as my personal savior in one of our chapel hours, but Satan came and snatched that faith and hope right away. I became a backslider. I was trying so hard to understand what was taught in Sunday school, what mama was telling me, and what I was discovering in my childhood adventures. At this point, I knew that what the Bible says are true, but me, being a hard-headed person and strong-willed, continued wasting my life. So now, what's going on with my spiritual life given the environment I'm growing up with? I continued my life despite the truth that was taught and preached to me. I pretended to be a religious person inside the church and a different persona when I am with my friends, a backslider. I was born to be a leader, a leader of cheaters and a leader of thieves. I had a rebellious spirit against people with authority over me. I knew this was wrong but I chose my wicked way. I was so prideful, selfish, and arrogant. I can do this. This is my specialty. This is my expertise. I had that void and emptiness in my heart. I was searching for ways to fill that void with temporal happiness instead of real and lasting joy. I was looking for the real meaning of life on my own, and it will lead to misery. I have no peace and felt that I was drowning and coming to the end of my rope. So where did I meet Jesus on the crossroad? One peaceful night, I reflected on the life I live, and the Holy Spirit convicted me. I was crying and sobbing remorsefully, repented all my sin, acknowledged my witnesses, that I humbled, surrendered, and rededicated my life to Jesus. From that moment on, Everything changed, 180 degrees. I was a new creature in Christ and was transformed by his blood when he forgave my sin and died on the cross. Apart from him, I am nothing. Baptism in water followed. It is my desire that if I live my earthly life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God is real. He is in our midst right now. He lives. He heals. And if you want to experience the peace and the joy He gives, accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. It is my hope 
and my prayer that your life will be touched and changed as you hear my testimony. The passage that is most meaningful to me for the assurance of my salvation is in 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The guiding principle I learned in my walk with Christ is in Matthew 5, 14a and 16b. You are the light of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Religion, yes, no matter which one, does not save you. It's about knowing that Christ died for your sins at the cross. Believe on the truth that you are a sinner and ask for forgiveness. Allow Jesus to cleanse your heart by repenting your sins and accept him as your Lord and Savior. Thank you very much.